What's up guys, Nick here from Nick Drop Tile World and today we're going to be talking about the two Merrells Boa. For those of you who don't know, the Dumeril's Boa, also known as Akron Tophis Dumerli, is a cathemeral ground-dwelling boa, which means that this animal is active during various points of a 24-hour day cycle, meaning that they are both active during the day and at night. The sizes range from 5 to 7 feet, and they can weigh up to 20 pounds. This right here, this is Vinny the Mini. He is my little baby, almost to a juvenile age. Um, he's getting there, he's got some time to go before he's actually really fully grown. He's about, I wanna say, close to a foot and a half, maybe two feet at this, probably, probably about two feet at this point. I'm gonna actually toss up on the screen what you're gonna be visually seeing once these guys get to an adult age. I don't have any adults, so I asked my friend, the all-Canadian reptile girl, Annalise, to provide me with a couple of videos, some b-roll footage for you guys I'm gonna play in the background while I talk, to kind of give you guys an idea of the size of these snakes. The lifespan of the Dumeril's boa can actually range anywhere from 20 to 30 plus years in captivity that's with all the proper care. Being a carnivorous ambush predator, these uh, these Dumeril's boas actually consume mammals, birds, and even lizards in their natural habitat. In captivity, these guys will actually happily accept chicks, uh, rodents, mice, rats. These animals come from their natural range in the south and southwestern portions of the small island of Madagascar. As you can tell, the cryptic pattern on these animals is designed to resemble litter and dirt on a forest floor which makes them perfect ambush predators along with providing an extra level of defense against other predators that may try to make a quick snack of a boa. Much like other boa species, these animals utilize the Jacobson's organ to find and bring in some scent particles which allows them to easily acquisition prey or other Dumeril's boas in the area. They also rock a idiosyncratic row of chemoreceptor pits. Now, these are also known as heat pits. They reside along the lip of the snakes. It allows them to locate prey and also send chemical communications between other Dumeril's boas as well, much like uh, their use of the Jacobson's organ. Now, this is a huge misconception that all boas get from people who don't understand what boas do when they constrict their prey. The main purpose of a boa constricting their prey is not like in the anaconda movie, which yes, anacondas are technically a type of boa, where they crush bones, they just try to get all the air that they can out of, the, out of their prey. The whole purpose scientifically for boa constriction of their prey is so that they can actually stop the heart of their prey. All that pressure on the internal organs kind of compresses all those blood vessels and doesn't allow the heart to pump or retract. And that causes catastrophic heart failure in their prey, making it easier for them to swallow the prey once the prey has passed. A key thing to remember is that the animals do brumate for weeks or months at a time during winter periods. So for those of you who don't understand what brumation is, it's essentially snake and or reptile hibernation. Now this can go on for, like I said, weeks or months, and they might not take any food in, and they may not be very active. This is common amongst these animals, along with many other reptiles, especially snakes. Now, these snakes are oviviparous, which means that they grow their eggs on the inside of their bodies, they let it inc basically incubate inside their bodies at the perfect temperature, and then when they're ready, they will basically expel or give birth to live bared offspring, which is awesome. Nova. Lay clutches of six to eight, 1.5 foot sized offspring. And they usually vary in color. Um, unlike most boa species where you can get, you know, morphs and stuff like that, these guys don't really have a morph. They just have a differentiation in their cryptic pattern 
between each individual, which I think is pretty awesome. It almost makes every individual unique. Big thing that I want to talk about is the conservation of these animals. So due to uh, habitat destruction and poaching for the skins or meat of these animals, the Dumeros boa is now on a list of endangered species. I just spit everywhere. <laughs> with the, uh, along with the appendix one of sites, meaning that it is illegal to trade these animals internationally. This is not an issue, however, due to the fact that you can purchase captive bred animals in most countries. Now, I have gone on Morph Market when I was looking for these guys, and a large portion of the ones that I can find are actually bred in Canada, which, due to their, their laws and everything in, the, in Canada, they can't transport them across state lines. So, what my goal is, obviously down the road, is to produce some beautiful United States produced captive bred animals for you guys. Here's a list of things that you guys are going to be needing. You're going to need a 4x2x2 by two by two sized enclosure for a single adult male. And you could actually, if you really wanted to, you could go a little bit bigger and you could go with a 6x4x2. By by now that is plenty of space for a single adult. It's actually also good for two adults as well. Because these guys, like I said earlier, they don't get to a big size. That's what makes these guys such a great beginner snake in terms of boas. They're not bitey, they're super calm, super docile, they don't move basically at all. If I put him down right now, he probably wouldn't go anywhere for a solid hour, and if he does, he's probably gonna move an inch. They don't really move very often. Like I said, they're ambush preys. They don't, they're not, you know, constantly moving all over the place. They find a place to burrow and they wait for their prey to kind of walk on by and they leap out of the leaf litter or the, or the, or, you know, dirt or whatever catch their prey and that's an easy day for them they don't have to really do anything i know that some people be like well there's a lot smaller boas well yes there are however ones that are more handleable this is a small to medium size in terms of handleable boas now this is great for a beginner you know it doesn't get too big it doesn't take up too much space they brumate for most of the year so there are long periods where you don't actually even have to feed them or where they just choose not to, you know, eat, which is, like I said, is very common. So they make for a great beginner snake for just about anybody. Even if you don't, you know, necessarily understand snakes and this may be your first snake, I honestly can endorse this as a beginner boa snake pet. As I was saying, their size is basically a small to medium sized Boa, I would like to say, in terms of lighting. So there's no true lighting that is required by a Duke Merrill's boa, but I suggest that you use either a single UVA slash UVB slash heat bulb, like a Sun Glow, Power Sun, one of those. Um, I personally use a 80 watt, uh, I think it's a, either a Power Sun or a, um, or the other brand, I can't remember the name of it. Um, <laughs> But I use a single one of those along with a heat panel on the underside of my animal's enclosure so that at night when the light goes off, they have that supplemental belly heat in their little hide area. However, if, if you choose not to go with a single multi-functioning bulb like I just suggested, you can also use a dual lamp system where you utilize a 5.0 UVB bulb and you also utilize a 80 watt ceramic heater. Now this can also take away the need for you to actually get an underbelly heater if you do choose to go with a ceramic heating bulb. Temperature and humidity. You're gonna want a basking spot of anywhere between 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're gonna want a cool side, and it kind of varies, anywhere between 70 to, I wanna say 75 for a cool side. It's pretty good for these animals. Humidity. Now humidity should be anywhere between 40 and 60%. The beauty of this, this you know, level of humidity is that you can choose to do one of two things. You can go with a bioactive enclosure and you could actually plant plants in there, just kind of scattered wherever you need and only water the plants. That will maintain that 60% humidity throughout the enclosure. Now, if you choose not to go with plants, you can just use a regu regular substrate that you just missed every now and again to achieve that desired, you know, that desired 40 to 60% humidity that your animal is gonna need to thrive successfully. For substrate, what I use for Vinny here is I use a, uh, a basically a cocoa fiber substrate. 
Now, cocoa fiber is great because it allows your Dumarils boa to exhibit their burrowing tendencies, which you will most certainly see with these animals. So it's very important that you get a nice loose substrate. Some people use aspen bedding. You can if you want. I just find that it doesn't really retain humidity as much as I want it to in specific areas. Um, you can also use cocoa husk. Cocoa husk does retain humidity quite well. It's really just not a fine grain like uh, the cocoa fiber that I use. It's just big chunks of the coconut instead. Now that may make it a little bit easier for you to clean, maybe a little bit difficult, depends on your preferences. It's all to you guys. Just keep in mind that this is most certainly a burrowing species. They will be utilizing a lot of loose substrate. So make sure that substrate is able to retain a little bit of humidity, but also at the same time is loose enough for these animals to set up their little ambush. Last but not least, obviously, it's all the stuff you're gonna to toss in there with them. Now with Vinny here, I've given him two hides. One hide is more of a hot hide, and the other hide is more of a cool, kind of damp hide, a little, little uh, humidity hide to elevate the humidity in there and allow for him to go in there whenever he wants to get some shed off or if he needs a little bit ex extra humidity, he can. You're also gonna make sure that you're putting down a lot of leaf litter. Now these guys do great with lots of leaf litter and it makes it almost impossible to find them because much like their cryptic pattern, their pattern actually resembles little cutlets of leaves that fall around their natural habitat, fall on the floor and over time, you know, decay, die, dry out, whatever, whatever you have it. Now these guys will hide right underneath those leaves and it is perfect because I, if I can't find them, I can guarantee you that a, a small mammal or, you know, a rodent most likely is going to have a hard time seeing them as well. That's going to wrap up the video, guys. I want to give you guys a link to the Oakland Zoo, which is where I got a lot of my research for this video, actually. If you guys are interested in any more scientific information on the Dumeril's boa, feel free to click on that link. I'm going to put it in the description for you guys. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys love these snakes as much as I do because they are awesome, awesome snakes. Great beginner snake, great beginner boa, just amazing animals, super docile, and I love them. I'm Nick from Nick's Reptile World, and I'm going to catch you guys later. Peace.